Unit 6 Review Sheet is part of, um, you can find it here under our um, the Unit 9 folder. Remember that it's all the old materials will be under Unit 6, but it is Unit 9. And so um, you don't have to worry about the assignments. We're not doing that. Um, this is the solutions to your template that you can use to make your cheat sheet. And here's the exam review, but it's also on the end of the lecture notes. And then there's um, some other information here. There's a big O algorithm summary. I'm not sure. I think that might be actually a duplicate version. Nope, it's something different. So um, this might be uh, good to look at. Big O stands for the order of an algorithm. And so in mathematics, for example, if we say uh, we have a second order equation, that's a quadratic or an n squared. And so when analyzing with big O notation, we um, say b the O stands for the order of what we're talking about. So a O1 is a function in, is where it's a constant. And we talked a little bit about that, that anything that basically does a calculation and returns it is an O1. We have uh, log n, and here it shows the base 2 log. Um, but when you write it out, we don't normally write that out um, just because it's of, of um, say, ease, actually. Um, but it is a base 2 logarithm. And then the algorithm in this class runs in logarithmic time because log n grows much slower than just n. A huge increase in the size of the problem results in only a small increase in running time. So I can ramp things up from 10,000 elements to a million elements, and it's not going to take that much more um, running time to perform that process. The complexity is characteristic of search problems that eliminate half of the search space with each basic operation. So a binary search is an example of this. And a linear, which is ON, is any increase in size results in a proportional increase in the running time. And so that complexity is characteristics of the sequential search that make a single pass through every single element. So because a sequential search has to pass through every single element theoretically, that is, you know, the last element that could be, that it's looking for could be in the last position. So it's a ON algorithm. We have an N log N. And that increase in the size of the problem results in a slight increase in the running time of the algorithm. And you saw that on the visual that we showed in the last PowerPoint or the last video where you saw, and I believe it's over here, that the n log n is um, slightly better than n squared. The best one is just log n. And so an easy way to remember that the n log n is a little bit worse than log n. If I take uh, calculate the log of a number, and if I multiply it by anything, it's going to be bigger than the log of a number. And so n log n is going to be a little bit worse than log n. Just a moment while I find the right slide. All right, I'm back. Um, so. So n log n is, uh, increases the size of the problem results in a slight increase in running time, as we just said. Quick sort is an example of that, and that's the average case complexity of the quick sort. Lastly on this list is n squared, and it's called quadratic time, and it's characteristic of algorithms that make multiple passes over input data using two nested loops. So any time that you have to basically look through all the elements and then um, you have to loop through again and again for example with your selection or your insertion or the bubble sort then that's going to be an n squared and so when they're using nested loops that's a pretty good idea that it's going to be an n squared so this is a nice little review sheet there um, if we go back to the chapter 6 review sheet you are going to be responsible for knowing on each of those algorithms with the big O um, questions like, if I take a look down here at the bottom, it says consider the following sorted array of integers. So we know it's already sorted. If 518 is the target value for a binary search, how many iterations of the algorithm are necessary? This is one of those where I'm doing a binary search. And so if I go back to my big O notation and a binary search is going to be an algorithm that's going to be classified as, let me take a look, actually the other chart is a better for this one, 
if we look at our comparisons and I look at a binary search, it's going to be a log n. And because of that, I can use that base 2 logarithm in order to solve this problem. So on that review, if I go back here and I think about, I know there's basically there's 100 elements and I want to find um, 518 is the target value for the binary search. I know that it's between, uh, it's about at the 55th element. Actually, this question is asking um, something a little bit differently. If I were to say what's the average number of items, then I would figure out what base 2 logarithm would be close to 100. And um, But this one is actually trying to figure out um, if the target value for the binary search, how many iterations to find it. What you want to do there is do calculations where you calculate the low plus the high index, 0 plus 99. And when you do that, you're going to get um, the middle element. And you have to keep calculating that low plus high to find the index that you're looking at. Okay. Um, on the next one down, consider the following array of sorted integers. A binary search will be, form, will be performed on this array. How many iterations will be required to determine this algorithm is not in the list. That 36 is not in the list. So this is one where take a look at how many elements there are, and there are 10 elements. So 2 raised to what power is going to be close to that um, 10 elements? So if I take 2 cubed, that's 8. And if I take 2 to the 4th, um, that's going to be 16. So I have to make at least um, 4 iterations um, through this in order to find that 36 is not going to be on the list. You could also do it manually by taking low plus high, finding the middle, and then do low plus high of what the result is there. Um, but you can also use that base 2 logarithm trick and just think log base 2 of what is going to equal my, you know, my 10 elements. You could also just calculate a, a base 10, a base 2 log of 10 and get a decimal equivalent and then you have to go one higher th or a little bit, you have to round up basically or go above what that decimal equivalent is. Next question here, number five, which of the following algorithms is matched up with this big O notation? You guys should go through that. And the solutions to these are posted. So that's another reason I'm not going through all of these right now because all of those solutions are posted back here. And you should see um, the solutions are posted um, down here, I think. If they're not posted, I will make sure that I get them posted right in this area. Okay. All right. Um, the other area that, or the other practice questions that you have are from the Barron's practice book. And I think they might also be the same ones that are down here if I take a look at it. And so, yes, these are from the Barron's practice book. There's a couple different um, practice things here, and there's the solutions to them. And what's nice about them is that they also provide an example. Um, explanation. So you guys can use the review book that you have or you can use these um, videoed or these um, copied versions. This particular set of questions though I put together last year and it's not available anywhere else and so we're going to take a look at going through some of these questions and then the answers to those are posted right down below here. I'm not going to go through everything because the questions are here and the answers are posted and so you guys should be kind of going through them and asking, you can ask me or you can ask Mr. Van Gundy um, questions about this before you test. So please feel free to email me as well if you would like. I am now going to go through some more specific questions in a third video, trying to keep the videos fairly short for you guys. And so the next video might you might find to be the most useful because we're going to look at some actual questions.